at night. Caution lights out around the third mile and atop the Elmwood, uh, the Bristol Toyota safety truck. Green flag, on four. Post stocks are underway, and look at the move that Pellin makes on Johnson at the drop of the green. Bobby Pellin drops down to the bottom of the track, right behind the 41 machine of Dickie Houlihan. As they power off turn four, back into one with Mikey Bryson, trying to make that outside groove work, and Pellin looks early underneath the 41 of Houlihan. Houlihan gets a little bit crossed up off the corner, able to gather back in, Pellin trying to make it three wide, settles it in, and here comes a cell caution is out. Anthony Ellis gets together off of turn number four with Kevin Pure of Dick Cooley. And the top eight drivers are all second generation racers. Looking for the green off of turn number four. Cooley and Brightman wind it up one more time. We're back underway as we head down into turn number one. Once again, Bobby Pella trying to stick it down to the bottom of the track. Does so perfectly. Racing side by side with Mikey Brayton now gets underneath the 41 of Houlihan. Battle for the lead on the first turn, and it is Bobby Pellin side by side with the 41 of Houlihan. Pellin edges ahead as they come off turn four. Pellin leads the charge down into turn number one, sets the pace, puts the 12 at the top of the leaderboard. Houlihan trying to hang on with Brightman working the inside lane down into turn number three. Estelle and Scully round out the top five. Bobby Pellin at the front of the field with Mikey Brighton sitting in second. Dickie Houlihan trying not to backslide too far back as Freddie Estelle looks to take away third from the 41 machine. Jake Fernando started 11th on the grid. He's up to sixth. Mike Mitchell was up to seventh after starting 12th. They've both been making some moves as we've got a battle for fourth down to turn number three. Scully down to the inside of Houlihan. Bobby Pellin still on side by side battling Dickie Houlihan falling way back up on the high side as Steve Darling puts him down one battle on the track is Darling and Scully as they battle for fourth on the track behind your leader Bobby Pellet. Estelle and Brightman battling for that number two spot. Brightman trying to hold on and hold off the charges of that white number 30 as they come off of turn number four. Nose to tail when they've got Darling in tow. And while they battle amongst themselves, Bobby Pellin has opened up a half a straightaway advantage over Brayman. Solid lead for Pellin, half a straightaway ahead of the 27 impact collision parts machine of Brayman. Estelle gets underneath the 27. Here comes Dave Darling. All over the rear bumper of the Everett's Auto Parts 30 as they come off turn four. Darling down underneath the 27, takes over the third spot. Meanwhile, Scully fills the hole down the inside. Caution flag is out. OceanStateOil.com. Nine laps up on the board as they come off of four. Pellin, Brightman, no side by side. Down to turn number one. Mikey Brightman on the high side trying to hang on. Here comes Freddie Estelle up underneath Dave Darling. Also in the mix there is Dave Ratley side by side. The 30 and the 52. Darling trying to set sail on the outside but has to get out of it as Brightman slides up the track. Brightman trying to protect that bottom groove down as turn number one as Darling winds up that outside lane off of turn number two. Darling looking for second down at the three and four. Dave Darling looks to clear the 27, does so on a turn four, sets his sights on the leader. Bobby Pell is going to have to hold off the man who's won six races here already this year. Darling up into the number two spot, closing in on the 12 by about a second and a half. Right now with six and five cars. As they come down the back straightaway, Kevin Foley slow in the racetrack. He's heading pit side. Estelle down to the inside of Freeman, down to the three. Freddie Estelle battling the 27th. That's for a third on the track. Estelle has the position. They race side by side out of turn two. Give the spot to Freddie Estelle and look at Tom Skelly Jr. Play follow the leader under the 27th. Skelly down underneath and behind them, the 11 of the Nash down underneath the Nava for the battle for six off of turn number two. Meanwhile, up at the front, Bobby Pellin's lead has evaporated, and here comes Steve Darling, your track champion, trying to get underneath the 12 and take over the lead, looking for a seventh win of the season. Pellin's not going to let him go down to the inside. You can see that already. He's going to make Darling work for it. Dave takes a look 
to the outside, settles it in back behind, takes four cup top, down to three. Darling to the outside of the 12 through three and four, Bobby Pellin tries to glue it down to the bottom of the track in the thirds and Steve Darling all over the rear bumper, stays to the outside, he's going to try and beat him on the high side. Earlier this year, Ryan Zanels was able to hold off the challenges of Dave Darling and pick up his second win of the season. Kellen is trying to do the same exact thing here tonight. Cross flag, 20 down, 20 to go for Kellen. And Darling, one and two. Halfway through, and is Bobby Kellen still on the point. Dave Darling lurking in the weeds, trying to find a way around that black and orange 12 machine. Gets underneath the 12 here as they go into one and two. Has to get out of it as they head down the back stretch. He jumps back out to the outside. Kellen pulling all the tricks out of the bag, trying to hold off the champion off of turn number four. 22 laps up on the board. And while they battle for position, here comes Estelle and closing in the gap. Freddie Estelle sitting in third, trying to chase down Pellet and Darling. Tom Skelly Jr. right behind him. Sitting in fourth, top four to break away now. Ryan Vaness is fifth, but he is a good half a straightaway back from fourth. Off the corner they come, laps on the second half of this race, and Pelly continues to keep that roll away disposal machine at the top of the leaderboard amid some heavy pressure from Dave Darling. Battle for sixth. Veneta taking a look down to the inside of Brayman. Down it's a turn number three. Brayman crosses over, shuts the door. Veneta kicks it back open. Pelly again shuts the door on. Darling that time, Bobby Pellin doing a great job up at the front, holding off the 52 machine of Darling. This has allowed both Scully Jr. and Estelle back into the hunt for the lead. Darling takes a look to the outside, settles it in, tries to cross over off his turn number four, just can't get the run, and settles it in back behind. Meanwhile, the battle for six continues to be hot and heavy. Darling down to the inside of Pellin, down it's a three. Pellin trying to shut the door. Pellin has to get out of it, so does Darling there. As they do a great job staying off each other now through two. And down the back straight away they go, putting Antonellis down a lap there as it is Bobby Pellin holding off to you, Darling still. Next time by will there be ten laps remaining for the Cranston, Rhode Island native. Ten more laps for Bobby trying to get his first post-hoc feature win. Well, all this race is going on at the top of the field. What a battle for six between Veneta, Brayman, and, her, and the 40 of Mitchell as they continue to race hard and heavy for that sixth position. But they are straight away behind the fifth place runner, Ryan Vaness. Helen continues to do a masterful job holding off Bobby, holding off Dave Darling. Darling tries the outside one more time. Here comes Estelle taking a look down low. Freddie Estelle's going to try to fill in the gap underneath Dave Darling. Darling's going to commit up or down. He checks in down behind the 12 of Pellin as they go into three and four. Nose to tail and they race across the stretch with Pellin hanging on the first right now. You know, you almost think that Dave Darling is playing and toying with Pellin. There's no playing and toying around. They are driving as hard as they can as they come off of turn number four. Across the strike, Darling again takes a look to the outside, tries a cross over Dave. Kellen this time gets caught up top as they hit turn three. They bounce off each other off the four. Dave Darling hedges ahead that time by setting sail. Bobby Pellin looks for the crossover. Oh, the rear bumper of the 52. But Darling takes the lead from Bobby Pellin as Freddie Estelle lets him settle back into second. Estelle's in third, followed by Tom Skelly Jr. Here comes Ryan Vaness back to the front of the field. Dave Darling now is putting a little bit of breathing in between he and the rest of the grid as they come off of turn number two. Brayman backsliding in the top side as Veneta, Mitchell, Martin, and now the seven of Casper have all slid by down on the inside. Twin sticks in here, two more laps for your pro stock champion, Dave Darling, at the front of the field. Bobby Pellin trying to chase him down down the back stretch. Not enough time there. Battle for third. Tom Skelly Jr. looked under Freddie Estelle. Right flag, final lap. But Dave Darling at the front of the field. Smooth sailing there. Battle for third. Scully all over the back bumper. The 30 of Michelle takes a look down to the inside. Starling takes down number eight. Pellin for second. 
Marcel will hold on and finish third. So, dude. Tonight will look like you're not you really throw anything but the kitchen sink at that 52 to try to keep him behind you. Yeah, I mean, I tried everything. I mean, Dave's just been the class of the field all year. I mean, I tried everything. You can't really do anything when guys pass you on the grass. I mean, that car is better than any pro stock I've ever seen here. He's the most dominant car I've ever seen. Um, congrats to them. Uh, we're building a new car for next year, so we're going to work on the offseason, come back, and hopefully we can challenge him next year. So close tonight. Yeah, and you guys have worked your tail off all year long to get this car where it's competitive week in and week out. And you were there. You're just missing that little piece, but I know you got some people you got to thank. Yeah, I mean, I want to thank my dad first and foremost. Um, he, I mean, he's at the shop like every night, kills himself on these cars. Um, Big Jeff, all my guys, Danny Perry, Eric, Jay. Um, if I'm forgetting someone, I'm sorry. Uh, any auto parts, roller disposal, buco and buco, just everyone. This is a much better finish than you've had the last few weeks. Yeah, it's been a trying couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> pretty pooped to be honest with you. My back's been out all day, and I wasn't even going to come, but I figured a fourth place finishing points is nothing to be ashamed of. So we're here dragging this deal through tonight. I want to thank Everett's Auto Pats. All the fans that stuck with Seacocks B.A. this year. It was a great, great season of racing. A lot of friendly faces that we've seen through the years. It's always nice to see them here at the Speedway. Thanks for everybody showing up this year. You look happier than you do. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't get mad or super mad or super happy usually. Uh, with my kids, I guess I get super mad sometimes, but uh, they do that to you. But they also make you super happy. So I'm glad that I'm here. I mean, we worked real hard all year. I mean, to win eight, eight features in one season is unreal. Uh, I gotta thank my guys, Jeff Bellier, uh, you know, he's unbelievable. Uh, Gary Johnson, you know, I gotta thank him. We've been doing it together, I think, 15 years or so, uh, you know, with Ronnie. Uh, my dad, he's been a supporter ever, ever since I was uh, a little kid, 15, 16, somewhere in there. Uh, you know, and he got me into racing. He raced, my grandfather raced, and, uh, you know, here I am today. I mean, it's, it's great, it's close to home. It's, uh, it's Seekonk, I grew up in Seekonk, so it's been awesome. The way this car has been this year, now you've had great seasons in the past when you've won the championships, when you haven't won the championships. Eight wins, and I think all but one finish out of the top five. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, every week, you know, Jeff just makes the right decision with weather, with tires. Uh, I mean, you know, he, he puts his heart and soul into this. So does a Ronnie Pond. Uh, I do as well. You know, Gary Johnson, all the guys, Frank, Tommy, Todd's been helping me uh, in a room a bunch of weeks. You know, I got to thank him. It's, it's been great to have, uh, you know, another person that knows how to work on cars, help us in the pits and stuff. And we just, we've had great luck. I mean, you know, I get a restart on the bottom and next thing you know, I'm fifth. I get a restart on the outside fourth. I'm like, oh man, I might go backwards and I get, and I, and I go, you know, and I get, and I get by two guys. So it's just, it's just been fortunate. We've been lucky and we're able to take advantage of the luck too. And you really had to work tonight. Bobby was not giving you an inch. Yeah, you know, and, and he shouldn't. Um, uh, Lucas, Lucas, buddy. Okay. Yeah, you know. Sorry, we almost had an incident. Um, sorry, Ben, you all right, bud? So yeah, Bobby did definitely. I mean, and he, you know, he, he had to. I, I, I was, I was content. You know, if I couldn't get by him clean, I wasn't going to go by him. And, and if I didn't get a run where I thought I was in there and I could stay in there, then I was going to back out. And I did that a couple times. And finally, I got a great run. And I'm like, I'm here, man. we got a race. Let's go. Looking, up, looking forward to next year. What are the plans? I don't know yet. Uh, you know, they've been asking me what we want to do next year. And I haven't decided. We'll see what the rules, you know, when they come out with the rules, what those look like. See what the schedule looks like. Uh, you know, we might have another new car. We'll see.